As we delve into the unlit corridors of outlaw motorcycle gangs, we venture into a world of its own, governed by its own laws and codes. This video reveals the top 10 most dangerous members of one such gang, the Banditos. Each of these individuals has shaped the course of this notorious gang's history in their own remarkable and sometimes terrifying ways. Number 1. Donald Eugene Chambers, Founding Father Donald Eugene Chambers, a veteran of the Vietnam War, founded the Banditos Motorcycle Club in Houston, Texas in 1966. Chambers, who had an affinity for the movie The Bandits, starring Marlon Brando, took the name and culture from the film and spun it into one of the world's most dangerous outlaw motorcycle gangs. Chambers was a man with a strong personality and a penchant for violence. His tenure as the Bandito's leader set the tone for the club's ongoing rivalry with other gangs, particularly the Hells Angels, leading to a surge of violence throughout the decades. His leadership style was often ruthless, ensuring loyalty through fear and brute force. The reputation Chambers garnered as a man to be feared was a significant reason behind the rapid growth and fierce reputation of the Bandidos. Despite the gritty exterior and a notorious reputation, Chambers also ensured the gang maintained a certain level of discipline and a code of honor amongst members, which in an ironic way contributed to the gang's survival and growth. He fostered the notion of brotherhood and camaraderie among Bandidos members, which became a cornerstone of their gang culture. The Brotherhood ensured loyalty, and this loyalty often meant silence in the face of law enforcement, further augmenting the gang's dangerous aura. Chambers' reign came to an end in the late 1970s when he was convicted for murder. He was sentenced to life in prison, marking the end of his active involvement in the gang. Nonetheless, the blueprint he created for the Bandidos would continue to guide the gang's operations and his legacy of violence, brotherhood, and outlaw culture remains a crucial part of the Bandito's identity. Even though Chambers is long gone from the world of the living, his influence continues to permeate the Bandito's ethos. As the founding father of the Bandito's, Chambers' life offers an insightful view of how the gang came to be one of the most feared in the world. It also serves as a stark reminder of how one man's vision can lead to a legacy of violence and lawlessness affecting countless lives in the process. Number two, George Wagers, international expansionist. George Wagers, known within the Bandito's Motorcycle Club as Georgie Boy, was a member who rose to prominence and took the reins as the international president of the club in the early 2000s. Under his leadership, the Bandito's grew to become an international powerhouse in the outlaw motorcycle gang, OMCG community, with chapters spanning across continents. Wager's background before his tenure as president is a shadowy one, similar to many others in the underworld of OMCGs. However, once he assumed the role of the president, his vision for the Bandidos became crystal clear. Global expansion. He emphasized a robust organization with a broad reach and considerable resources, transforming the Bandidos into a sophisticated, highly coordinated international operation. While the Bandidos were already a notorious club before Wagers, he brought a sense of calculated ambition to the table. Under his reign, the club expanded dramatically, and chapters were established in various countries, including Germany, Denmark, Australia, and beyond. This expansion often led to violent conflicts with rival gangs who already had a presence in these areas, notably the Hells Angels. Yet Wagers never shied away from this potential for violence, using it to further solidify the Bandito's formidable reputation. However, Wager's tenure was not without controversy. In 2005, he was indicted on multiple charges, including racketeering, conspiracy to commit murder, witness tampering, and drug dealing. Authorities claimed that Wagers ran the Bandito's as a major criminal enterprise, with the organization's hand in multiple illicit activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, and violent crimes. Despite the legal battles, Wager's impact on the Bandidos remained undiminished. His vision of an international brotherhood of bikers was realized, and the Bandidos' presence across the globe today is a testament to his influential leadership. Furthermore, his ruthless management of the club's illicit dealings further entrenched the Bandidos' place as a dangerous criminal organization. Wager's tenure as the international president of the Bandidos brought a new level of sophistication and coordination to their operations. 
His penchant for expansion saw the club spread its wings far and wide, establishing a foothold in various countries. His influence remains a crucial part of the Bandido's identity and continues to shape the direction of the club even years after his departure. His era solidified the Bandidos as a global force in the outlaw motorcycle club world, marking him as one of the most dangerous and influential Bandidos in history. Number 3. Glenn Merritt, The Enforcer Glenn Merritt, often known as Satan, is a significant figure in the history of the Bandidos motorcycle club. His name itself suggests the fear he instilled within and outside the gang. Merritt's reputation wasn't merely from his status as a member of the Bandidos, it was born from his role as the club's enforcer, a position that required a certain level of ruthlessness and fearlessness. Merritt was not just a member. He was a symbol of the club's violence and lawlessness. As the enforcer, his role was crucial in maintaining the order within the gang and demonstrating its power to the outside world. He was the person responsible for carrying out punishment against members who broke the club's code and against anyone who posed a threat to the club. This role inherently required a disposition for violence and intimidation, traits Merritt possessed in abundance. However, Merritt wasn't just about brute force. He also had a keen understanding of the dynamics of power and control. He knew how to exert his authority to maintain the balance within the gang and to establish the Bandito's dominance over rival gangs. His approach was a mix of raw power and psychological warfare, making him an effective and feared enforcer. In the world of outlaw motorcycle clubs, where power and respect are earned through fear and violence, Merritt's role as the enforcer placed him at the top. He embodied the brutal side of the Bandidos and served as a stark reminder of the consequences of crossing paths with the gang. Despite his eventual capture and imprisonment, Merritt's legacy within the Bandidos motorcycle club and the larger outlaw motorcycle gang world is undeniable. His ruthless approach to upholding the club's law and protecting its interests made him one of the most dangerous members in the Bandito's history. His name is often spoken with a blend of fear and respect, serving as a reminder of the Bandito's capacity for violence and their unwavering commitment to their code. His tenure as the Enforcer was a testament to the dark side of the outlaw motorcycle gang world, solidifying his place in the annals of Bandito's history. Number 4. James Lang, The Negotiator James Jim Lang stands as a figure of intrigue within the Bandito's Motorcycle Club, not so much for overt violence or blatant lawlessness, but for his uncanny ability to navigate the turbulent waters of outlaw motorcycle gang, OMCG, politics and rivalries. Known as The Negotiator, Lang carved his place in Bandidos's history through a blend of shrewd diplomacy, strategic alliances, and a keen understanding of the OMCG landscape. Unlike many other figures in the Bandidos who rose to prominence through physical power and fear, Lang's strength lay in his words and his understanding of human nature. As the club's negotiator, Lang was responsible for managing inter-gang disputes, negotiating terms with rival gangs, and forging alliances that would benefit the Bandidos. His role was crucial in maintaining a relative balance of power among various OMCGs, ensuring the survival of the Bandidos amid the fierce competition and often volatile interactions. However, don't let the term negotiator mislead you into believing Lang's role was non-violent. His position required a significant level of ruthlessness, albeit of a different sort. Lang had to maneuver through a world where negotiations often happened at the end of a gun barrel, and where the wrong word could ignite violent confrontations. Lang was also known for his strategic acumen in managing the club's relations with law enforcement. His understanding of the legal landscape and his ability to communicate effectively with various stakeholders played a crucial role in mitigating the club's legal challenges. While he couldn't entirely shield the club from the law's reach, his efforts often helped the Bandidos navigate through the intricate web of legal issues. James Jim Lang's contribution to the Bandidos' legacy cannot be underestimated. His strategic approach to negotiations and inter-gang relations allowed the Bandidos to consolidate their power and extend their reach. His skill in negotiation and strategic thinking demonstrated that violence wasn't the only path to power in the OMCG world. 
Lang stands as a reminder that danger and influence in outlaw motorcycle clubs come in various forms, and that the power of negotiation can often match the power of the gun. His unique approach and skill set make him one of the most influential and dangerous figures in the Bandito's history. Number 5. John Xavier Portillo, Reign of Terror John Xavier Portillo, an influential figure in the Bandito's Motorcycle Club, rose to infamy during his tenure as the national vice president of the gang. His reign marked a period of increased violence and illicit activities, garnering him the moniker Reign of Terror. While many members of the Bandidos have reputations steeped in fear and intimidation, Portillo's influence and actions left an indelible mark on the gang's history. Rising through the ranks, Portillo became a significant player in the Bandidos operations. As national vice president, he assumed a position of power and control over the gang's activities, leading a surge in criminal actions that ranged from drug trafficking to violent assaults and even murders. Portillo's leadership style was ruthless, often resorting to violence as a means to assert authority and maintain control. His direct involvement in many of the gang's violent incidents not only highlighted his personal penchant for violence, but also reinforced the club's fearsome reputation. His leadership was characterized by a hardline approach, leaving no room for dissent and asserting the bandito's dominance over rival gangs. Portillo's reign was not limited to overseeing violent acts. He was also deeply involved in the gang's illegal operations. His involvement in various criminal enterprises, particularly drug trafficking, brought significant financial resources to the Bandidos, further solidifying their position in the outlaw motorcycle gang landscape. His direct involvement in such activities highlights his commitment to the Bandidos' outlaw identity, regardless of the legal implications. However, Portillo's reign was not to last. His widespread illegal activities drew the attention of law enforcement agencies, and he was eventually arrested on multiple charges, including racketeering, drug trafficking, and murder. The trial and subsequent conviction exposed the extent of his involvement in the gang's activities and brought an end to his reign of terror. John Xavier Portillo's reign exemplifies the dangerous nature of the Bandidos Motorcycle Club. His involvement in a wide range of criminal activities, his ruthless leadership style, and his dedication to the Bandidos' cause cemented his place in the gang's history. His reign of terror remains a stark reminder of the violent and lawless world of outlaw motorcycle gangs, marking him as one of the most dangerous members in the history of the Bandidos. Number 6. Jeff Pike, Power Consolidator Jeff Pike, often called the godfather of the Bandidos Motorcycle Club, held the reins of the gang as its national president for a significant period. Unlike many of his predecessors and contemporaries, Pike was known less for his personal acts of violence and more for his ability to consolidate power, maintain discipline, and manage the vast outlaw empire that the Bandidos had become. Pike ascended the ranks of the Bandidos to become their national president, a role that put him in a position of unparalleled power and influence within the gang. Pike, unlike some other members, was not known for his individual violent exploits. Instead, he earned his reputation through his ability to wield power and control within the gang effectively, making strategic decisions that kept the Bandidos at the top of the outlaw motorcycle gang hierarchy. Under Pike's leadership, the Bandidos maintained their notorious reputation. Pike's reign saw a consolidation of power within the gang, with an increased focus on maintaining discipline and order among members, even amidst the chaos of the criminal underworld. His reign saw the continuation of the gang's involvement in various criminal activities, from drug trafficking to violent crimes, further fueling the Bandido's dangerous reputation. Pike's strength lay not in physical intimidation or overt violence, but in his ability to command respect and maintain order. He oversaw the Bandido's operations with an iron fist, ensuring that members adhered to the gang's rules and that any deviations were met with swift punishment. This strict enforcement of discipline, coupled with Pike's ability to steer the gang's strategic direction, further strengthened the Bandido's position in the outlaw motorcycle gang world. Jeff Pike's legacy within the Bandido's Motorcycle Club is one of power consolidation, strategic direction, and stern leadership. 
Despite not being as overtly violent as some other members, Pike's leadership style and his role in the gang's operations have earned him a place in the Bandidos' history. His approach to power and control within the Bandidos serves as a testament to the complex and often dangerous dynamics within outlaw motorcycle gangs, making him one of the most influential figures in the history of the Bandidos. Number 7. Jesse James Benavidez, The Subversive In the annals of the Bandidos Motorcycle Club, the name Jesse James Benavidez is synonymous with subversion and insubordination. Benavidez, often known as the Subversive, was a member of the Bandidos, whose actions posed a significant threat not only to rival gangs and law enforcement, but also to the internal stability of the Bandidos itself. Benavidez was a member of the Bandidos who never quite fit the traditional mold. Unlike other members who focused on strengthening the gang and adhering to its code, Benavidez had a reputation for stirring the pot. He was known for his independent streak and an unwillingness to follow orders, traits that often put him at odds with the gang's leadership. While most gang members would have been swiftly dealt with for such insubordination, Benavidez was different. His propensity for violence and his apparent fearlessness made him a formidable figure within the gang. He was known for his involvement in various violent incidents and criminal activities, which only solidified his dangerous reputation. Benavidez's volatile nature extended beyond his actions. He was known for his outspokenness and his willingness to question the decisions and directions of the gang's leadership. His behavior was a constant source of tension within the gang, often leading to internal power struggles and disputes. Despite this, Benavidez remained a significant figure within the Bandidos due to his ruthless nature and his ability to strike fear into the hearts of both his rivals and his peers. The danger posed by Benavidez was not limited to his fellow gang members. His reckless behavior and involvement in various criminal activities made him a target for law enforcement. Despite numerous attempts to apprehend him, Benavidez managed to evade capture for a significant period, further fueling his notoriety. The legacy of Jesse James Benavidez within the Bandidos is a testament to the unpredictable and volatile nature of the outlaw motorcycle gang world. His willingness to challenge authority, coupled with his violent tendencies, marked him as a dangerous and disruptive figure within the gang. His actions and the fear he instilled in others continue to reverberate through the Bandidos' history, marking him as one of the most dangerous members in the gang's history. Number 8. Justin Forster the strategist. In the world of the Bandidos Motorcycle Club, Justin Forster stands as a character of intrigue, not necessarily for his physical prowess or propensity for violence, but rather for his strategic mind and administrative acumen. Known as the strategist, Forster's tenure within the Bandidos was marked by his ability to strategize and manage the gang's operations, contributing significantly to its expansion and strength. Forster, an influential figure within the Bandidos, took on the role of National Sergeant at Arms, a position that required the tactful coordination of the gang's activities and the enforcement of its rules. His job was to maintain discipline within the club and manage its daily operations, making his role essential to the club's structure. Unlike some other members known for their individual acts of violence, Forster's strength lay in his strategic mind. He was tasked with planning and executing the gang's operations, navigating through the intricate and volatile landscape of outlaw motorcycle gang politics and dealing with rival gangs. His role was as dangerous as any, for a wrong decision could lead to violent reprisals and possible law enforcement scrutiny. Forster was also known for his management skills, coordinating the activities of the Bandidos across different regions, ensuring coherence in their operations, and overseeing the implementation of the gang's rules and regulations. His organizational acumen was essential in maintaining the structure and discipline of the club amidst the chaotic world of outlaw motorcycle gangs. However, Forster's position did not shield him from involvement in criminal activities. As a leading member of the Bandidos, he was deeply involved in the gang's illicit operations, which included drug trafficking, extortion, and assault. Despite his strategic mind and organizational role, Forster was not immune to the violent and criminal aspects of the gang's lifestyle. Forster's tenure within the Bandidos came to an end when he was arrested on multiple charges, including racketeering, drug trafficking, and conspiracy to commit murder. 
His arrest and subsequent conviction highlighted the extent of his involvement in the gang's criminal activities and underscored the dangerous nature of his role. Justin Forster's legacy within the Bandidos Motorcycle Club is one of strategic planning, meticulous organization, and a ruthless dedication to the gang's cause. His approach to his role, though less overtly violent than some, made him a formidable figure within the gang and a dangerous adversary to its rivals. His story serves as a reminder that danger and influence within outlaw motorcycle clubs come in many forms, marking him as one of the most pivotal figures in Bandidos' history. Number 9. Robert Quiroga, The Provocateur Few figures within the Bandidos Motorcycle Club managed to stir as much controversy and tumult as Robert Quiroga. Known among the Bandidos and the broader outlaw motorcycle gang community as The Provocateur, Quiroga was notorious for his bold actions and an uncanny ability to incite conflict, both within the gang and against its rivals. Quiroga was not a figure who sought to blend into the shadows. Instead, he thrived in the spotlight, using it to assert his dominance and provoke his rivals. His audacious demeanor and propensity for confrontation made him a controversial figure within the bandidos, often leading to internal disputes and external conflicts. Quiroga was not merely a provocateur in words. His actions mirrored his provocative nature, often resulting in violent altercations and conflicts. Whether it was engaging in violent skirmishes with rival gangs or openly defying the authorities, Quiroga's actions were a constant source of conflict and unrest. His disruptive tactics were a testament to his dangerous nature and his willingness to stir the pot at any cost. However, Quiroga's provocations were not limited to his own actions. He was also known for instigating others to act on his behalf. Whether it was rallying fellow bandidos to confront rivals or manipulating situations to incite violence, Quiroga's ability to provoke others into action further amplified the danger he posed. Quiroga's provocative nature and his involvement in various criminal activities eventually drew the attention of law enforcement. Despite his bravado, Quiroga could not evade the law forever and was eventually arrested on multiple charges, including assault, drug trafficking, and involvement in organized crime. Despite his legal troubles, Quiroga's influence on the bandidos and the broader outlaw motorcycle gang community remains undeniable. His provocative nature, combined with his fearless demeanor, left a lasting mark on the gang's history. His actions, while often controversial, exemplified the defiance and audacity that are synonymous with the outlaw biker culture. Robert Quiroga's legacy within the Bandidos Motorcycle Club is one of provocation and controversy. His audacious actions and his willingness to incite conflict have solidified his reputation as a dangerous figure within the outlaw motorcycle gang world. His story serves as a stark reminder of the volatile nature of the outlaw biker culture and the dangers posed by those who dare to stir the pot, marking him as one of the most dangerous members in the history of the Bandidos. Number 10. William Billy Queen, The Infiltrator Within the Bandidos Motorcycle Club's history, William Billy Queen's story stands apart. He was tasked with infiltrating the Bandidos, exposing their illicit activities, and assisting in their ultimate downfall. Known as The Infiltrator, Queen's dangerous journey within the Bandidos' ranks offers a unique perspective into the outlaw motorcycle gang's inner workings, Queen's mission was daunting, infiltrating an organization known for its secrecy, loyalty, and violent retaliation against perceived betrayals was an inherently dangerous task. However, Queen managed to earn the Bandidos' trust, rising through the ranks while simultaneously documenting the gang's criminal activities. His task required an incredible amount of courage, guile, and determination. Despite the inherent danger, Queen maintained his cover for two years. During this time, he was privy to the inner workings of the gang, participating in their rituals, attending their meetings, and even living their lifestyle. His infiltration was so successful that he ascended to the position of a fully patched member, offering him unparalleled access to the gang's operations. Queen's infiltration was instrumental in bringing to light the extent of the Bandido's criminal activities. His work led to the arrests of numerous high-ranking members, severely weakening the gang's infrastructure. This achievement was a testament to his skill as an infiltrator and the inherent dangers he faced. 
However, his actions did not come without severe repercussions. Following the conclusion of his mission and the subsequent arrests, Queen faced numerous death threats from the banditos and their associates. His life, post-infiltration, was marked by constant caution, highlighting the danger associated with his role as an infiltrator. Despite not being a banditos member by choice, William Billy Queen undoubtedly ranks among the most dangerous figures in the gang's history. His unique position as an infiltrator not only highlights the risks associated with such a task, but also underscores the inherent dangers that characterize the world of outlaw motorcycle gangs. His story remains a testament to the lengths to which law enforcement will go to combat these dangerous organizations.